I'm taking my first steps on land here in Muslim Mindanao. It's time to find out if this place is dangerous or not. Oh my God, that is amazing. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome down to General Santo City here in southern Cotabato in the Philippines on the island of Mindanao. We are bouncing through all kinds of new provinces and places here in the Philippines, and today is extremely exciting because we're hitting up the Bangamuro Autonomous Region of Muslim Mindanao, or also just known as the Autonomous Region of Muslim Mindanao, or known as the BARMM. This is a region of the Philippines that most travelers do not visit. Most governments have put out travel advisories not to visit these areas explicitly, and today we're going to be finding out if they're dangerous or not. Because of the current virus outbreak that's happening across Asia, the Philippines is going into full panic mode. General Santos City is closing down within 24 hours, so we gotta get out of here as fast as possible. Currently in Cotabato City, there are zero cases, so we're gonna be moving forward. But before we do anything else, let's roll the intro. Ladies and gentlemen, our crew for the day. We got Jay in the back getting ready to sleep, of course. <laughs> we got L. Yeah. And then we got our driver, Rick. Yeah. Rick was not an easy person to find, ladies and gentlemen, to get to Cotabato and to convince a taxi driver at 11 p.m. last night, which we did, that you need a taxi driver to drive you three hours north one way is not an easy journey to complete. Uh, and it's not cheap either. But we're gonna be doing this because this whole part of this journey here in Mindanao is I gotta try to at least, if not understand what's going on, is at break the stigmas to see if these places are actually dangerous or not. You know, there's a lot of misinformation about Muslim in Danao, and we wanna find out and see if it really is as dangerous as everybody claims it to be. So we got two stops that we're gonna be making today, pretty much. We're going to the Pink Mosque, which is in this uh, province called Sultan Kudarat. Yeah. So, wish us luck on the journey. Here we go, I'll be documenting it along the way to show you guys in preparation of what it's like to do something like this. Once again, because of advisories from different governments, I can't outright recommend you to do what we're doing right now, but, Keep in mind that I'll be documenting the whole experience for you and you can kind of make up your own opinions as we go. Anyways, ta-da, let's hit it, oh, let's go. All right, here it is guys, there it is right there. There's the sign entering us into BARMM Samoro, Autonomous Region of Muslim Mindanao. This is once again one of those places if you would have told me two years ago when I first came here that I'd be here right now, I'd never believe you, ever. Here it is the roll up. And boom, we're in. green mosque. Oh yeah, baby. That is cool. So it's been really cool driving through here so far, uh, through this part of Muslim Mindanao, because there's tons of little mosques everywhere. I've never seen anything like this. I've been to a few Muslim countries and a few Muslim areas around the world, but I've never seen like uh, just tons of little mini mosques everywhere. They have them almost everywhere. Here. So we're coming up on the pink mosque right now, and you can see Masjid di Makom. Dima'ukum, Dima'ukum, say it in an Arabic accent, Dima'ukum. Uh, you can see a bunch of these pink pillars and a military checkpoint, but all these pink pillars signifying the entrance to the pink mosque. Oh, oh my God, that's cool. What? <laughs> oh man, I was not expecting that. Oh, look at that. Oh my God. This looks like Disney World, what? That is the most flamboyant, beautiful mosque I've ever seen in my life. Oh my God, it's a pink mosque. <laughs> That's so cool. Look at that, that is amazing. All right, gonna take my first steps of land 
on the autonomous region of Muslim Mindanao. Let's find out if this place is dangerous. Oh my God. So of course, because we are in a Muslim area and because we're going into a mosque, for guys, very important that your legs are covered with knee below. We're allowed to cover the area to make a documentation, but on the outside, not inside the mosque. Okay, no, no problem. But yeah, so because we're not Muslim, most times uh, non-Muslims are not allowed to enter inside of a mosque itself. But uh, you can see the women have to wear head covers because we're going into a you know area. So right outside here, you have a cover of the Quran, I believe. And then this big archway that says Ahlan wa Sahlan, which means welcome to the mosque. Perfect. Yeah. Here's the entranceway. Wow, this is amazing. Hello. 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 Look at this thing. This is incredible. I've seen many mosques in my life, but never anything like this. This is absolutely mind blowing. Oh my God, it's so pink and it looks really new. I can't believe it. The place that we're inside of right now is called Datu Saudi. That's like the barangay or the city that we're inside of. So this, from what I've understood, was built uh, using outside funding from different Middle Eastern countries. I don't wanna name which ones because I don't know, but you could see all the Arabic writing out here. You could hear the Muslim calls to prayer in the background coming from another mosque, not this one. And uh, you could just see the immense amount of work and effort that was put into decorating this place and making it look as amazing as it does. I mean, it's super pink. <laughs> Everything is pink and it's etched with these beautiful gold outlinings and the inside as well, the halls, uh, which we can't enter, but you can just see are, are, are pink as well. And it's just, man, the detail in here is just incredible. Shoes off? Yeah. I'm just waiting. Alright. Surprise, surprise, we were being led into the mosque. I was not expecting this. Here we are. Getting an inside look at the pink mosque here in Muslim Mindanao in the Philippines. This is this is a rare occasion. This is pretty cool. El, what do you think about this place? It's really beautiful. It's magnificent. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely amazing. You look so Muslim right now. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Absolutely amazing visit to the pink mosque. Shukran to the people who built this thing. It's amazing. It's really, really cool. So we're now going to leave from here. We got uh, about an hour journey probably extra now to Cotabato City. And that's where we'll be visiting the Grand Mosque, the biggest mosque in the entirety of the Philippines. But for now, we continue our drive through Muslim Mindanao. Tada, let's hit it. Taking me back to Sri Lanka. <laughs> yeah, I, I've never yet in the Philippines seen monkeys on the side of the road. I've seen them in the jungles and stuff, but never on the side of the road. All 
All right, so we're just rolling up right now on the biggest mosque in all of the Philippines, the Grand Mosque of Cotabato, and you can just see it from down the street that we're driving right now, and it looks massive. It looks so big. Oh my goodness. That is so big. Oh, it's oh my God. That is beautiful. Oh my good. Oh my Lord. Philippines, I didn't know you had it in you. To be completely honest with you. I did not think you had it in you, Philippines. That is Oh so man. About an hour drive here. Look at this thing. So this was built by one of the sultans, or funded to be built by one of the sultans from Brunei. Uh, I think, yeah, the, uh, the the island of Borneo houses the country of Brunei. Uh, and so he funded to build this, because we're not too far away now from that area of the world. We're not too far away from Borneo. Uh, we're pretty, pretty close. But this is insane. Oh my God, what a big mosque. All right, L once again breaking. Oh, wait, actually, can't we touch? Can't touch here. <laughs> clearly not. Clearly not Muslim. We can. But Ellen got us in, uh, even though this place is closed technically right now. So, this is the Grand Mosque of the Philippines. It's the biggest mosque in the entire country. Which is which is crazy. I mean, and it is. Beautiful. The architecture is amazing. All right, prayer has just begun. Listen to the call. So if you're not familiar with the Arabic language at all, Allahu Akbar, which is what is said right now in the prayer most of the times they chant it and they sing it in form, means God is great. That, there you go. Allahu Akbar. Sometimes they'll say Allahu Rahman, which means like he's the merciful. I think that's what they just said. Mosque of Cotabato was amazing. Shukran. Uh, and we are gonna leave now. We're gonna head to Cotabato City proper after the whole journey. Is Muslim Mindanao dangerous? Is it safe? I don't know. Look, I can't tell you outright right now. Thank you. I'm being handed. What is this? Bukayo. Bukayo. Uh, uh, mm. Okay. It's delicious. Thank you. I can't for certain tell you guys that this place is safe, safe, safe. Because things do happen. But, I mean, it feels very safe. The roads felt very safe. People were very friendly. Everything felt very accommodating so far. Nothing felt overly threatening or dangerous about it. Take that as you will. But it is an amazing, amazing, amazing part of the country to visit so far. And I'm very excited to see Cotabato City. All right, so we have made it to Cotabato City proper now. Guys, honestly, I don't know. I feel like it's all just hype about this place being crazy dangerous in a war zone. It doesn't feel like it. It feels like a normal city. We've come to City Mall. This is a new brand of mall. I haven't seen one of these yet in the Philippines. Uh, I don't know who it's owned by. I don't think it's like SM or anything. Um, but I heard that there's specific cuisine in this part of the Philippines 
um, it's like called Moro cuisine because the Moro people are like the Muslim Filipinos. And so apparently they have some more different cuisines that aren't, you know, found in the rest of the country. So we just found a little restaurant here. I want to see what they have on the menu if it really is any different. Because if not, we'll probably just head into the mall and just have some fast food like we usually do. But let's see if we can find something different. Hey, this place looks cool. Yeah, they have kambing. Uh, this one. Is it beef? No, it's uh, goat. Goat. Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay, I'm down with this. Oh, this looks awesome. Do you want this one? Yeah, I'll take this that. Chicken? All right, so this is where we're eating. The house of Mangindanao food. Mag Magindao. Magindanao is the province that we're currently in. I gotta say, really, honestly, guys, this feels like the Middle East of the Philippines. It's so cool. Everybody's just wearing hijabs and, you know, Muslim wear. There's Arabic everywhere. And it's super hot. Like, it's ridiculously hot. Like, hotter than other places in the Philippines and it's not jungly it's dry the air is dry and it feels like a little deserty I don't know if that's just me connecting these things that are unrelated but it feels like it anyways this will be my first time I think ever eating at a proper halal establishment in the Philippines so I'm excited for this they got some different cuisines goat is what we're gonna eat right now so let's try it out alrighty here we go we got some goat meat it's got some pumpkin in it, it smells a bit sweet Mm, it's got a little, it just reminds me of like Sri Lankan curry. It smells delicious. What is this, chili? Um, uh, coconut. We with chili. Is it sweet? No, coconut with chili. Coconut with chili. And how do you, how do you say the name of the goat? Gambit? Gambin? Gambin. 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 Gambin is what we're having. Gambin. Gambin. All right. Goat. Adobo in Cotabato City. Let's try it out. Oh, you try it. It's a little sweet. It's definitely a, a lot of adobo y. Mm. And the pumpkin, there's a mission, but the, the meat is so tender. All right, so we just departed from Elle and the driver. I want to take a big shout out real quick and just say such a huge thank you to Elle for everything that she did for us in our time in Gensan and getting up here to Cotabato. She really took care of us and made us, made sure that we were safe the entire time. So huge thank you to Elle, huge shout out to her. But now we're in Cotabato on our own. And this is what we get for 750 pesos. So just around 15, $16. This is the room. It's pretty gnarly. It's not, it's not the nicest thing in the world for almost 20 bucks. Crazy amounts. I recommend that if you guys want, check out Airbnb down below in the description. There's some scattered Airbnbs, but of course, because of this virus that's going on right now, even the Airbnbs have stopped functioning. So hopefully when you come to Cotabato, you can actually use my Airbnb. Link down below in the description will give you $40 off your first Airbnb, which can be well over a few nights to free to stay in this city. So check that out down below in the description. So I told you guys this in the Tacloban episode when we were down in Leyte, but in the Philippines, always, 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 if you have a hotel, try to see if you can get to the rooftop because most times you can. Here, I just had to ask them if I could come to the top of the roof and I could and it's awesome because you get the rooftop, but then you also get a view of the whole city from up here and it's fantastic. There's such a great view. Uh, I'm going to fly my drone real quick because I, I, I love getting to see a vantage point of these cities. Today, we've been lucky enough to fly near the Pink Mosque, the Grand Mosque. Now, let's see what Cotobato City looks like from above. The city's amazing, huh? I mean, it's not particularly like a crazy looking city, but the area that it's in, it's just so cool. I feel really grateful to be here right now. Uh, it, it's fantastic. Over here, you can see the old municipal city building. It looks like an old Japanese pagoda or something. It's got a Filipino flag there. And then these are like the sort of Muslim arches and then city square. Like we are literally smack dab in the middle of the city, um, which is really cool. But anyhow, I don't know. I just feel, I feel grateful to be here because me two years ago would never have stepped foot in Muslim in Danao. It definitely wouldn't have come to Cotabato. And I, uh, I'm just happy to be here. I'm grateful for the opportunity. And that's where I'm going to end today's video as we fly by this jolly bee in Cotabato City. Your word of the day today is going to be in Arabic, which is Salamu Alaikum, which means peace be upon you. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Love you a long time. Goodbye, clats.